But there are concerns over what takes place within emergency intake sites. In April, Governor Greg Abbott called on the Texas Rangers to investigate allegations of abuse and neglect within the Freeman Coliseum over in San Antonio. At a press conference, the governor spoke on the allegations and called the center a, quote, health and safety nightmare. Complaints that were sent to these state agencies include the following four things. Children at this facility are being sexually assaulted. Second, there are not enough staff to safely supervise the children at this facility. Third, some children in this facility are not eating throughout the day. And fourth, children with COVID are not being physically separated from children without COVID. You just heard from Governor Greg Abbott about the conditions many unaccompanied minors face while in detention centers and shelters. As many of their journey starts at border crossing sites, children are faced with trauma. But for many kids, that trauma begins long before they reach the U.S. I talked to women on the front lines trying to keep kids safe. You've seen the videos. Children trekking along our borders in hopes of a better life in the United States. I think we need to be more compassionate towards these kids. Um, you, you don't know what they've been through and you don't know who's done it to them. And the kids themselves don't fully understand. It's a journey most adults can't imagine, but thousands of kids are making it on foot and alone. In terms of what they have gone through to get to the border, you understand that it's probably the strongest and the most resilient kids that actually get here. Dr. Selma Iznaga, an associate professor of counseling at UTRGV, has worked with unaccompanied children for decades. She says behind their protective shell is an incredibly vulnerable child. They're victims of violence. If they are forced into the gangs, then they are perpetrators of violence, um, even if they don't want to be. Dr. Iznaga says this builds up and the trauma follows them for years. Brain and body are constantly communicating. There's a threat, there's a threat, there's a threat. You can't let your guard down. And so you get stuck in that. Threats of violence forcing them to leave their home countries food insecurity, and even a lack of health care. There's also the, the very, very real danger that the younger children are too weak to make it. So a lot of these kids are traveling with younger siblings, but their younger siblings frequently die or get left behind because they're just too weak to make the journey. Dr. Iznaga says survivor's guilt follows. Rochelle Garza, a civil rights and immigration attorney, has represented immigrant children in court. She says the legal process can also be traumatic. I think it's just really breaking it down and just saying we have to see a judge and a judge is uh, going to decide whether or not you should stay in, in this country or not. And um, I mean, that's a really heartbreaking thing to say to a kid because they don't quite, they, they don't have concept of borders. She says one of the hardest parts is building trust. Sometimes it, it takes years for, for them to disclose, you know, fully what has occurred to them in their life or to even really come to terms with what has happened to them. Just one reason psychologists and counselors are critical. It's a game changer uh, when you can have a psychologist work with the child and really, um, really get the real story, but also help them with coping mechanisms. Garza and Iznaga agree kids need compassion. We need training. People need to understand this is not a bad kid. This is a kid who's stuck in survival mode and that's how they know to stay alive. It's cliche. People say, you know, children are the future, but it's true. And if we don't show some compassion to these children, who, who are they going to be when they grow up? Her final thought? I think the most important thing for all of us to remember is that they are children. Despite what they look like on the outside, they look tough. They look like they can make it on their own. They are children. 
Well, once those kids are processed at the border, they're sent to different shelters run by the Office of Refugee Resettlement. From there, the process of family reunification begins. You can help these children by donating clothing, school supplies, or even purchasing a bus ticket for the child to meet their sponsor or family.